My name is Schubert Ellie, and this is my public access television show. This is the cinema of Schubert Ellie. And the reason I call it that is because I've always heard the phrase, you know, my life's a movie, and I think that's a little self-centered. Because life is just one big movie, and we're all playing a small part. Not really sure what to say about the show, you know, it's going to be things I see, and places I travel, and things I find interesting. And I hope you stay along for the ride. Anyways, let's go ahead and start the show. Cause this is the cinema we're sure Hello, this is Shu Bodelli. And today we're visiting the world's most unusual dollar store. They have to call it that because legally, they sell more products that are more than a dollar than they do products that are a dollar. So they have to put that more in there. So it's not the world's most unusual dollar store. It's the most unusual dollar store and more. One of the best products you can get here is light up signs. They have one for every hobby, such as Jesus, chargers, motorcycles, tattoos, chefs, stoners, beer fans, vape kids, hookah pipes, beach thugs, cowboys, cold beer, people who are addicted to alcohol and say it's five o'clock somewhere. They have all the signs for everyone. Sometimes I like to stop in this aisle right here and look at the barbecues. I don't have any friends to do a barbecue with, but maybe one day and we'll come to the world's most unusual dollar store and more. In this area, you can find every single kind of beauty supply, product, and old medications that might be expired, but also might be a really good deal on something like cold stuff, or maybe medication that makes you hot. I don't know. We're not legally allowed to talk about medical advice on this show. If you're looking for a belt, look no further. You can always find one at the closeout store. Or a nice dress, or a doll, or a bandana, or whatever one of these things are. Knock off Brad's doll's invitations. One of the coolest things about the closeout shop is that they sell a bunch of old stuff. You can get invitations from the 90s with Clifford on them, Come on to the big party, or Pikachu. Or maybe you can get a net to catch your neighbor's cat and then give them a kiss. <coughs> they sell pots and pans and marijuana. And really bad oven mitts to burn your hand for comedic effect. Whenever I need to buy things for the bathroom, I always come to the closeout store because it's always so cheap. I can get some soap to clean my butt. I can get some rugs to put on the floor to pee on. And then I can get one of these things to look at when you're tripping on mushrooms. And there's a really big dog bowl 
for big, big dogs. And in here in this aisle, they have all the incense, which is primarily for new agey types and teenagers who don't want their parents to find out they were smoking mids. So you burn a couple of these sticks and it will get the mid smell out of your carpet. And that's the Brodelli Guarantee. They have every single different type of scent. And I'm gonna get some for myself. For me, it's gotta be the Nag Champa. It's the only thing that gets the mid smell out. After you get your mid destroying incense, go ahead and light one up the next time you blaze it, and I bet it's gonna cover up the smell. Here they have a bunch of other junk that you can use, like old DVDs. Mostly direct-to-DVD movies, CDs, VHS tapes of golfing tips. They used to have erotic aquatic, but they don't have it anymore. I tried to go in the back where it said keep out, and they told me if I went back there, they'd kick me out of the store. So I didn't. This is where they keep all the boomer hats. They got all different types of ones. I ended up getting one of the hats for myself that said, don't ask me for shit. You may have seen it in the bike night episode. And then our last stop. The most important stop, the pipe section. Now I know it says, for tobacco use only, but repeat after me. I'm gonna smoke cannabis from this pipe, and I don't care what you have to say about it. They got all different types of dumb stuff you can buy, like this giant raw cone. Who needs a cone that big? That's ridiculous. Nobody needs to smoke a cone that big. Anyways, this is Shoe Bro Deli, and I gotta run home to smoke from my dollar store closeout and more pipe. I hope you guys have a great day or great night. I don't know when you're watching this, I just hope that you do. Goodbye. Please leave a message for Shubro Deli. Hi, this message is for Shubro Deli. This is Danny Glucose calling to ask you, what is the number one best movie scene of all time? Number one best movie scene of all time, according to Shubro Deli. Thank you. So at this point in the movie, he lost his gold, 
lost his woman because they shot him when he lost the gold in the tar. So now they're coming to take revenge on him for double crossing them. We have ways of teaching uh, the Mexican them a rebels. So he's gonna send right, Miguel, Miguel to fuck him up real quick. Miguel's gonna fucking kick his ass. Miguel looks pissed. What a fucking oh fuck! This is like the best part because like this is the music that uh, Quentin Tarantino would go on to use in his film Django, which was an homage of this film. Uh, the music really is something that. It's my favorite, because it was Eno Mincone. I'm probably saying his name wrong, but he's an amazing composer, and he's just worked on hundreds of movies from The Thing to, you know, just countless titles. But, uh, yes, this is one of the best scenes in the movie. You know, and then he sends the horses to walk over Jango's hand, because, you know, he's the outlaw, kind of anti-hero, fast gun shooter that comes into town and starts trouble. Uh, and that's why they're killing him. We're not killing him, but they're fucking up his hands because they don't want him to be able to use them anymore to shoot anybody. You know, it's the only way. If you don't kill a man, you do take away his ability to defend himself in the West. You pretty much have left him for dead anyway. Good morning. This is Shu Brodelli. Today we're visiting a restaurant for a diner style breakfast, or as it's commonly called, American breakfast, or if you're from America, I guess you just call it breakfast. It's usually an unhealthy affair consisting of processed meats, and dairy, eggs, breads, juices, coffee, and a lot of sugar. It wasn't always this way though. The modern breakfast was invented by a marketing man named Edward Mayonnaise, who used his uncle Sigmund Freud's ideas to help convince the public, among other things, that bacon and eggs were a true all-American breakfast. He was a pioneer in the field of public relations and being a scumbag and propaganda. He was referred to in his obituary as the father of public relations. And many a scumbag would follow in his footsteps, but back to breakfast. It's usually a multi-plate affair consisting of a combination of eggs and preserved meats and breakfast breads such as pancakes, waffles, toast, or biscuits, depending where you are in the United States. Usually in the South, you'll get like biscuits and gravy, or if you're up North, it might be something different like waffles. And then another plate with toast, rye, white, or wheat, depending on your choice. And then there's usually some other small dishes with butter and jam packets, and creamer if you're drinking coffee, and of course sugar packets.
The love of traditional American style breakfast runs deep in the history of the country and pop culture. For instance, in the 1980s, an entire culture of music and dress was themed after the morning meal. It was called break dancing. The break coming from the break and break fast, which was an old English term for fasting during the night when we're asleep, and then waking up to eat and break the fast. These dancers found they would dance much better if they had a hearty meal in the morning, leading to their style of dancing being called break fast dancing, later shortened to break dancing. Well, as I finish my coffee and I think about where I'm going to go next, remember the best way to make breakfast is the way you like it cooked. This is Shubrodelli, and I hope you have a great day.